So I've had my original Legion Go for about a year now. With all the buzz around new handhelds, I even briefly tried the SteamOS version of the Legion Go S. But long story short, the Legion Go S wasn't for me. Light bleed, OS bugs, and a screen that felt just a little too dark. After returning a couple of units, one even with a dead pixel, I was about to give up on that front. But then a thought struck me, why not just upgrade the Legion Go that I already own and love? The idea was simple, take my trusty Z1E powered Legion Go, which I had already upgraded to one terabyte and dive headfirst into SteamOS. I've been using my Ally X more recently, mainly for its battery life, but the promise of SteamOS with better battery management less tinkering than Windows for a streamlined gaming experience and that amazing sleep mode was all incredibly tempting. Windows Hibernate can be a pain when you're on the move. It takes upwards of 15 seconds to enter and exit, but with SteamOS, you pick it up, you play, and you can suspend it quickly with minimal battery drain. And that's a game changer for someone busy like me. So I wiped Windows and gave it a shot. Immediately, a few issues popped up. Things like Wi-Fi sometimes not reconnecting. Apparently it's a 6 GHz band thing. TDP control not working natively on SteamOS. But there's a way to fix that. A tiny, awkwardly placed keyboard in desktop mode, and even some random hard crashes. It all sounds a bit rough, right? Well, here's the thing. Most of these things have fixes or workarounds, and SteamOS is always getting updates, making it better and more reliable by the day. For the upgrade part of this adventure, I wanted more storage. I decided to go all out, and I picked up a 2TB Corsair MP600 Micro. This is a Gen 4 PCIe NVMe drive with high density TLC NAND. So why TLC? Better sustain rights and much better durability. We're talking 1200 terabytes written compared to a QLC drive with much less. This should keep my Legion Go happy for a long time. Let's get this new drive in. First detach the controllers. There are six screws on the back. We're gonna need to take those off. Gently pry open the back cover with a plastic pry tool. You don't want to scratch the casing. Once inside, it's a straightforward swap. Remove the old 2240 NVMe and slot in the new Corsair MP600 Micro. With the new drive in, seal it back up and create our SteamOS install drive. For a super fast install, I'm also going to put the image onto this 512GB NVMe drive. housed in the Charge Disk Plus. Charge did send this over, and it's a nifty way to reuse an old drive. It supports various NVMe sizes and has a 10 gigabits per second USB 3.2 Type-C port, which should make this install fly. If you want to pick one of these enclosures up, I'll leave that link down below as well. Head over to Valve's website and download the latest SteamOS recovery image. I'm using Blaine Etcher to flash it. Alright, so the installer is ready. Plug in the Charge Disk Plus and let's boot into the Legion Go's BIOS. To do this, hold down the power button and the volume up, then click on the BIOS option. We're gonna need to disable Secure Boot before we install SteamOS. Once that's done, set the external drive as your main boot source. The SteamOS installer is pretty straightforward. Just select the drive you want to install it to. In my case, it'll be that new 2TB Corsair drive. You gotta be careful here. If there's a drive with an OS on it, it will be wiped. So double check that you pick the right one. The install itself shouldn't take too long. And with all that done, we're into the OS. First things first, get signed into your SteamOS account. Once that's done, I highly recommend swapping over to the beta channel for more SteamOS updates. I found this much more stable on the Legion Go than the stable branch. Next, press the menu button and head into desktop mode. Our first major tweak is to install Deku Loader. If you haven't set an administrator password for your SteamOS desktop yet, you'll need to do that first. Type in passwd into the console and then follow the prompts to create one. Once that's been set up, we can install Deki Loader. This is a fantastic homebrew plugin launcher that unlocks a ton of customization. Download the installer file and double click on it to run the installer. Then you just have to enter your password. Then just choose the latest stable release. 
Once Decky Loader is installed, return into gaming mode. Then when you press the quick access menu button, you'll see a new plug icon. That's Decky. Now that Decky Loader is installed and we've confirmed it's working in the game mode, let's get that TDP control sorted out. Head back in the desktop mode and open up Firefox to search for Simple Decky TDP. If you're looking for its official page on GitHub. Scroll down until you find the quick install script. Copy that command. Next, open up console. That's the terminal. If you already have a password, paste the simple decky TDP install script into the console and press enter. It's going to ask you for your password to proceed. This plugin is essential for proper TDP control since SteamOS doesn't officially support it on the Legion Go 1 yet. Otherwise, you're stuck using the hardware buttons to swap the TDP, which is definitely a viable option. And yes, that on-screen keyboard bug might still be there in desktop mode, at least for my unit. I don't have a fix for this yet. I also have to press the X button after Steam is booted, not the Steam button plus X to bring it up. So after these tweaks, how is it? Honestly, it's pretty great. That quick sleep and resume is fantastic. Booting straight into my Steam library is just incredible. Yes, there are some initial hurdles, but the community and tools like Decky Loader and its plugins make this very usable, and often the preferable experience. Just one more note as well, I've heard you also don't want to use the updated fan curve as that kind of plays with the fan control. So just leave that option off for now and the fan should work properly. For me, this has breathed new life into a handheld that I enjoyed but didn't play very often compared to my Ally X. I can see myself picking this up even more than that now. It's also much faster side by side in the UI and boot speeds compared to the original Steam Deck OLED. So was upgrading my original Legion Go to two terabytes and installing SteamOS worth it? Absolutely. It took a bit of effort, but the result is a more versatile and enjoyable handheld experience for my needs. If you're thinking of doing something similar, hopefully this journey helps you out. What did you think? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing for more adventures into the world of portable gaming. Thanks for watching.